Hey there. All right. So I know my last video was a 30 minute ramble, but I'm rambling again because the uh, presidential debate was last night. I was completely unaware that it was actually happening until like halfway through yesterday. And then I saw something on social media that was talking about it happening later that day. And I was like, oh shit. Um, and I watched it, and I want to talk about it. Um, so, if you're not into politics, I understand. It's a touchy subject. It's, this isn't going to be <laughs> maybe the most relaxing video ever. Um, you know, shit sucks. But I want to talk about it, because it's important to me, and I think it's important to everyone. Uh, but again, I can understand if that's not something you want to participate in, so feel free watch one of my other videos my last video completely random if you just want to listen to a ramble uh, and you haven't seen that one you can watch that one uh, I'll have it linked in the cards um, or watch any other of my rambles I have made probably a hundred of them at this point so if you just want to listen to a ramble go ahead um, but we're going to talk about the debate. And like in the last video, I was tapping on the coaster. I'm going to tap on this lip balm package um, just to have a different sound going during the video. Um, this one is maybe a little bit louder. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't do this one. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. But I like the sound it makes. <laughs> I do like that, like... It's like that paper package. It's got that, like, hollow sound to it. We're gonna go with this one. Hopefully you'll still be able to hear me. If not, maybe it's for the best, I don't know. But anyway, the, uh, the presidential debate was last night. If you're an American, you might have watched it. I am American. I watched it. Um, if you're not American, you probably don't care. Although, there's a chance that it still kind of impacts you to a degree. As much as people may want to deny it, America is, after all, the most important country in the world. And... The things we do impact pretty much everyone, so, you know, this this candidacy, this election is, while, you know, it is just for America, it could very well impact the whole world. Uh, but it was pretty depressing, honestly. Um, It's sad. It's it's really sad, honestly. It's 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 gotten to a point where it's it's no longer funny. It's just sad. Um, you know, I would say back in like 2016, the 2016 election, and I guess the the years and months leading up to the 2016 election. I don't know. Maybe 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 no maybe no blistex. I can't. I gotta focus on talking. Sorry. Um, um, anyway, the 2016 election and the months and years leading up to that were kind of the peak and, in my opinion, kind of the start of the memifying, if you will, of politics in a way. Obviously, political humor has always been a thing and it will always continue to be a thing. Humor is a coping mechanism, after all, and politics is a huge source of things that you'll need to cope with um, because they impact our very lives so it makes sense that people would make jokes but um, hopefully you can't hear that cicada you probably can I guess it's cicada season um, it's pretty loud I'm sorry <laughs> but anyway um, you know we had things like thanks Obama and I'm sure there were plenty of jokes made during, like, the Bush administration and whatnot. Um, but I feel like 
the the like the height of memeness surrounding politics really peaked around the 2016 election and i think that probably also just coincides in general with like memes just being a big thing around that time i feel like you know before that you had memes like rage comics and stuff like that like the classic like early to late 2000s memes um but like internet culture as a whole was just like really blowing up around 2016 and so you saw a lot of memes and a lot of jokes being made about politics at that time especially by people that really didn't know what they were talking about you know like little kids like high schoolers and shit like that that you know they're just making fun of the situation because they don't really understand any of it and it doesn't i mean obviously it impacts them but they don't have any say because they can't vote and whatnot um they're not as invested and i don't know i guess simply because at that time that was me that was my age demographic and i have to appreciate that you know i could very well be wrong and that it's just my perspective that i'm projecting onto the world but that's just the way it seemed at the time but at this point it's not funny anymore it was it was funny back then because it was kind of like a whole mockery you know like it was just the best way i can describe it is that at that point in time politics were serious and they were presented to us in a serious way and it was us that made the jokes about the politics, right? Whereas now it feels like the politics are the joke. Like the politicians and the things they talk about and the way they talk. It's all just a fucking charade. It's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's a circus. It just doesn't feel serious anymore. And that doesn't feel good. Um, I don't know. It's it's sad honestly it's it's like i said it's just not funny anymore and maybe it never was um and i was just younger and so it, it didn't matter to me as much as it matters now but um i guess that's just part of growing up i don't know um but it was sad it was sad i was incredibly surprised while watching the debate that there was seemingly no level of moderation whatsoever um Because, I mean, there were just, it seems like, and I mean, this is just a fake statistic, so I guess I'm a hypocrite, but it seemed like 80% of what Trump said was just a straight up lie. Just a straight up lie. Like, it's just, just a lie. Not even like a truth spun into a lie or like a truth exaggerate. Like, no, just like, just a straight up lie. Just conjecture, you know, just nothing at all. And they didn't stop him at all. And it was weird. It, it just seemed like he was getting away with it. It just felt very odd to me. Um, I have some theories as to why that would have been the case. Um, so the debate was being hosted by CNN, which is, you know, generally seen as a left-leaning media outlet news outlet whatever you want to call it and i suppose it's possible that they were concerned that if they were you know actually moderating the debate fact checking everything that was being said so if someone would say something they would say you know that's not true or whatever you know give the actual statistic that is actually true or whatever you know whatever kind of moderation you're talking about um anything more than nothing at all i guess there was the concern that it would come off as you know liberal media just censoring the republican candidate um oh, sorry i kind of bumped the microphone there um But at the same time, it's like, what are you supposed to do? It's, it's a, it's a lose lose in that case. Like, why? The, you, you you can't allow that. You know, you can't just allow someone to blatantly lie 
on stage in front of millions of people. Millions of people were watching that. Millions of people. And he presented everything with the same level of assurance, whether it was true, because some of the things he said were certainly true, but a lot of what he said was not. And there was no way to tell what was true and what was not. And there were some times when Biden would call him out on it, where he would say that that's just not true. But the problem with Biden is that he can't fucking talk. He's too fucking old. And so whenever he refutes something that Trump says, it doesn't, he doesn't say it with the authority required to make it clear that he was actually wrong. So it just comes off as like, no one is opposing him. It's, it's really strange. Um, I thought that was pretty weird. Uh, it's also possible that, um, you know, because a big part of Trump's whole persona as a politician, you know, a big part of his campaign and a big part of like his, you know, appeal to the people that want to vote for him is this idea that he's like cutting through fake news, you know, fake news. That's a big term that gets brought up a lot in his campaigns. And that's a big part of his like political alignment, I guess, if you will. Um, is this idea that like the media can't be trusted, that censorship is bad and stuff like that. And obviously true censorship is bad. If a person is trying to stop you from telling people the truth, you know, then that is bad. But the opposite is not bad. Stopping someone from telling a lie is not a bad thing. And in fact, it, it's a, it's a duty. <laughs> I would say any news source has a duty to stop the spread of misinformation. Um, but anyway, the point I'm trying to make is simply that because that's a big part of his campaign, again, kind of similar to what I was saying before, it's like if, if they had tried to fact check him at any point during the campaign, he could just use that as ammunition, you know, look, they're, they're only censoring me because honestly, I don't really know anything that, that Biden said that was factually incorrect. In all honesty, he just didn't really say much at all. And anything that he did say was pretty incoherent. Um, so they probably wouldn't have been fact checking Biden much at all. And so it would have looked kind of weird, you know, if they're just constantly fact checking Trump, but not fact checking Biden, even though it's, that's just the way it would have been because Biden wasn't lying, but it, it would come off weirdly, I think. So maybe that's why they did that, but it, is it just seemed really dangerous in my opinion uh to do it the way they did it because how many people are going to watch the debate and just not listen to or watch or break it down any further than that and they're not going to watch any kind of analysis that happens after the debate they're going to watch the debate turn it off and they're going to make up their mind about what they just saw and during the debate no one fucking said anything <laughs> to Trump and no, no one, no, there was no moderation whatsoever. So any person that just watched the debate and just accepts everything that was said as fact, yeah, they're going to walk away from that thinking that <laughs> Biden is a monster and Trump is a God. It's just, I just, I, I, I don't know how that was done or why that was, you know, chosen to be the way that it was conducted. It seemed very strange to me. Um, I, I didn't like that at all. Um, so yeah, it, it was, it was disappointing. Like I said, it, it, the whole situation is highly depressing. Um, because everyone knows that it's going to be one of them, right? As much as we all hate them both one of them is going to be the president and neither of them is going to be a good one. You see a lot of people make the point of, you know, oh, well, Trump is a literal felon and a liar and Biden is just an old guy. And I can get behind that argument, but it doesn't make me want to vote for Biden anymore. It really doesn't. It doesn't help the situation at all. Like, he's fucking old, dude. He's fucking old. That's the best we got. Like, 
it's embarrassing. It's, it's fucking embarrassing. Um, I just, I don't know. He was, he was, I mean, there were points during the debate where he would become more coherent than others. And there were points during the debate where he was borderline comatose. Um, but I think a big part of it really, it's not so much that he, he clearly has trouble like putting together his thoughts, right? But I think more than that, especially in the context of this debate, like I was saying, especially going up against an opponent like Trump, it's highly important that you present confidence. You know, you have to present confidence because Trump is a highly confident individual. He's, he's a con man. That's the one thing that they're good at is portraying confidence, right? That's how they get people to fall for their traps. Um, and so you, you have to, you have to match that intensity and he just didn't, he just couldn't. And so every time that he refuted something that Trump said, it just didn't land. It didn't land. Um, and that was really disappointing because it basically just gave Trump free reign over the whole thing. And obviously anyone that has half a brain would know that the things that Trump was saying was not true, but how many people, there's a lot of dumb people out there and a lot of them get to vote. And look, I'm not even saying that people shouldn't have the right to vote or that like voting should be behind some kind of like IQ test. Cause fuck that shit. That's the wildest shit I've ever heard. But there needs to be some level of moderation, you know, some, you, you can't let that happen. I, I think that that is, because, okay, so what, what's the argument for allowing something like that? Oh, freedom of speech. He has the freedom of speech. He can say whatever he wants. That's not what the freedom of speech is. The freedom of speech is simply a way to protect people from voicing concerns about the government. It's a way to make sure that the government can't say, oh, you said some bad shit about us. Well, now we're going to execute you. That's what the freedom of speech is. The freedom of speech doesn't give you the right to just say whatever the fuck you want to say without consequence. That's not the freedom of speech. And that's basically what he just did. He just went up and said whatever the hell he wanted and no one did anything. I don't know. And to be fair, not every single thing he said was factually a lie, but a lot of what wasn't a lie was also just not like it didn't mean anything as an example. I, this isn't necessarily, I mean, he did kind of mention this at some point, but this, I, I can't recall every single thing that was said in the debate at this moment right now. Um, so this is an example that's a little arbitrary, but it'll get my point across. Let's say I'm Trump and I make the claim under the Biden administration, murderers came up across the border, right? I, he, he probably said something along those lines. I don't, he probably didn't say that verbatim, but you get the idea. That is the claim. The claim is that during the Biden administration, murderers came up from the border. Is that factually a lie? No, it probably is not a factual lie. It's probably factually true, but does it matter? No, it doesn't fucking matter because for many reasons, <laughs> for many reasons, the first reason being is that you just can't vet every single person. You can't stop illegal immigration. It's just not possible. Uh, America has a lot of border. I mean, we have a lot of border that borders on the ocean as well. But the border between the United States and Mexico and the border between Canada and the United States is large. There's a lot of border there. It would be borderline impossible or highly expensive to just monitor that all the time. So you can't stop illegal immigration and legal immigration. You just, you can't vet every single person. Everyone is fully autonomous. I could choose to do whatever the hell I want. And so can every other person. The fact of the matter is, is that some people that come in to this country are going to end up being murderers. That's just the way it is. It sucks. 
It'd be nice if we lived in a world where that wasn't the case, but it is the case. So it, it, saying that, even though it's true, it doesn't mean anything because it's just kind of the way things are. And it also doesn't matter because the implication is, is that during the Biden administration, murderers came up across the border. But during the Trump administration, that never happened. But that absolutely happened. It's 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 not possible to stop it from happening. So it, uh, it it's just there were a lot of things like that where like if he wasn't lying, a lot of what he was saying was just arbitrary. It didn't matter. But it, to a person that's not really thinking about it, it sounds bad, especially when you're going up against someone like Biden who doesn't seem to have the mental cognitive abilities to properly refute that claim to point out why it doesn't matter you know that's the thing it's like it almost seems like in a way that biden is the perfect candidate for trump to run against because he just doesn't have like the spirit required he doesn't have because you, you really don't even need to be smart to run against trump i feel like you really don't because Trump's not smart. You don't need to outsmart him. In fact, honestly, outsmarting him would probably be pretty challenging. Not because he's smart, but because he's just so dumb that, you know, he, he projects this level of, like, dumbing down. Where anytime you would try to use, like, an intellectual argument against him, it's just not going to land. Because he just doesn't debate that way, you know. But what you do need to have is you do need to have confidence. And... Biden just doesn't have that. He just doesn't have the ability to be that because he's, what is he? He's 82 fucking years old. I just, I'm smiling. I'm smiling. But it is incredibly sad. Trump's old too. He's only two years younger. He's, what, 79, I guess that would make him. That is wild. That is wild. What is the age of retirement in America? Isn't it 65? There is an age minimum to become president but not an age maximum. That just doesn't make any fucking sense at all. It's sad. It's embarrassing. As an American, I don't want either of these individuals representing America. I don't. And I guess the argument to be made about voting for Biden is that despite him clearly suffering from cognitive abilities, um, you know, it's not going to be him, right? You don't have to worry about him being kind of incoherent because when it comes to his presidency, the policies and stuff will be made by his advisors and stuff. You know, he's not actually going to be the one calling the shots, but that doesn't make me feel good. It makes me feel the opposite. Why is it Biden's name on the ballot if he's not even going to be the one who's actually really the president, you know? If it's going to be just a bunch of random advisors that are actually pulling all the strings and calling all the shots during his presidency. Like I, I, the whole point of voting for a president is that you understand who they are and the, the types of policies that they stand behind. That's the whole point so that you can align yourself with someone who has similar values to you. And I guess you could make the assumption that anyone that's going to be an advisor to him is going to share his similar values. I mean, sure. That's a pretty safe assumption, but, there's no guarantee and not to mention everyone is slightly different. So it, it still just doesn't make sense why it would be him. If the whole point of getting him into the presidency is just to get his advisors to have a chance to make some policies that would be better than the ones that Trump would push forward. Why isn't it their name on the ballot? You know, it's just, I don't know. It's disappointing to say the least. Um, it's, it's certainly worrisome also, um, talking about specific questions that happened during the debate, uh, Trump was asked, uh, regarding specifically like the January 6th stuff, um, that, you know, come time after the election, when all the votes are tallied, would he accept the results, win or lose? And it seemed like he basically just said, if I win, you know, it was fair. 
and if I lose, it was not fair. And I guess everyone kind of assumed that that was going to be the way it was, because that's the way it was with the 2020 election. But it's just kind of wild to hear it be admitted out loud, you know, I don't know, it's just, it's sad, it, it really is sad, and it's, it's, it's kind of scary in a way, too, it's, because, I mean, January 6th was bad, but it could have been a lot worse, but who's to say what it's going to be this time, you know, <sighs> And I don't want to put that, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to judge something before it happens because I believe that every, everything should be judged with an open mind based on the things that actually happen and not the things that could happen or might happen. But I can't deny that it is a scary thought, you know, I don't know. Um, one of the questions that was asked to Biden was, I don't remember exactly how it was worded, the question was worded, but it basically amounted to them asking him if he, like what he considered the Republican voters, you know, um, like I said, I, I, I should have written it down before the video, um. But the question was basically, you know, what was Biden's opinion of the people that would vote for Trump? And I was really hoping that he would, you know, it would be like offering an olive branch or whatever that saying is where you, you know, you bridge the gap, right? But he didn't do that. He he basically compared them to Nazis. Um, he told some parable about uh, fascists wearing swastikas coming out of a forest or something. Um, it was it was highly disappointing, um, and it was a really bad move in my opinion because, I mean, any any individual that had, that was even like kind of on the fence, you know, any person that had any sort of alignment with Republican views is going to be offended pretty hard by that, right? Um, I mean, when he just straight up says, yeah, basically, all Republicans are Nazis. <laughs> that's a bad move. That's, that's a really dumb move. Um, because not only is it just not true, um, it just, it looks bad and it's going to push people against you because n nobody wants to be compared to a fucking Nazi. Um, yes, there are certainly radical people on both sides of the spectrum, but the fact of the matter is, is that a, a vast majority of the voters on either side are just normal people. They're just normal ass people. And if anything, they're just scared. A lot of us are just scared because of what we've been fed. You know, that's just the way the world is now, unfortunately. Because apparently that's just the best way to, to work things, you know. It's just fear works better at gaining an audience and gaining supporters than any other method. And so people use it a lot. But a side effect of that is that it pushes people to the extremes. But I still, deep down in my heart, believe and know that a vast majority, a vast majority of American voters are just normal people, just normal, everyday, middle class, working people. That's, that's the fact of the matter. And that's the answer I was really hoping he would give that everyone whether you're a Republican, whether you're a Democrat, we're all way more similar than we are different. And that, you know, a middle-class Republican and a middle-class Democrat have far more in common than a middle-class Republican has with 
an upper class Republican or a middle class Democrat has with an upper class Democrat. That's just the truth. The biggest divide in this country is wealth. It isn't race. It isn't political alignment. It isn't religion. It is wealth. And I really wanted him to address that. And they, it seemed like they, they really teed it up for him. Um, and he failed and that was disappointing. That was extremely disappointing. Um, I really am not a fan of the polarization of just society in general. Um, but it is exceptionally apparent with politics specifically, and maybe it's nothing new and maybe I've just become more conscious of it as I've gotten older and, you know, I understand things better now than I did when I was a kid. That's probably true. But it seems like more than ever before, you're, you're not allowed to think about things. You have to have a, an opinion and it has to be a strong opinion and you have to make it fast and you have to choose fast. And whoever you align yourself with, you have to be against the other side with all your might, with every fiber of your being, you have to be against your opposition. I hate that. I hate it because it's, it's not constructive at all. It doesn't lead to anything good. There's no benefit to that. At least not for us, not for the people. The only one that benefits is the, the people that are pulling the strings, the people that are pushing us in that direction. I don't know. It, uh, it's, it's just unfortunate. And I get it. This stuff matters. Like I get why people get so defensive and I get why people get so caught up in the emotions of it. Um, it's easy to say like, oh yeah, just, just think of things objectively, you know? Um, but a lot of it is emotional. I mean, it's, it's just the way it is. And it's hard to be objective when you're emotional. And I understand that. I don't necessarily blame people for being that way. If anything, I, I don't blame the people at all. I, I absolutely blame the media because they're, they, they push that agenda, you know, on both sides of the spectrum. Because like I said, fear is just that good of a tool and they know it. Um, I don't know. It's disappointing to say the least. It'll be very, honestly, I can't even think of the right word to describe it, but interesting, concerning. It'll be something to see what happens. Um, I just, I, I, it really doesn't seem like there is any sort of winning here as a, as a person, as a real person, as a citizen of the United States, it seems like there's no winning here. And that doesn't feel good. Um, but that's just kind of the way it is. And unfortunately, I don't see that changing. I guess we'll see what happens after this election, you know, four years later. Maybe we'll get some better candidates. But again, it's, it's not necessarily, I mean, obviously the candidates here are bad. They're bad. But it's, it's, it's more than that. It's the whole ideology, the whole like feeling surrounding politics, the way they are conducted, the way they are presented to us, the way people talk about them, the way people feel about them. It's all changing. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, I could, 
I could I could go on for a long time talking about why it bothers me um, because it bothers me immensely but I'm probably just going to end it there um, hopefully this was a soothing video um, although I imagine it probably wasn't that soothing uh, so sorry. I guess if you're not American, you could probably find this video entertaining to some degree. Um, simply because it just doesn't pertain to you as much. Um, but, yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll catch you later.